we ask you not to be soon shaken in your mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one, say no one. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God." May God have the blessing upon the reading of his word this morning. You may be seated. I need two people to come help me this this morning. Who's willing to help me? All right, there's one. Mm, I need a teenager, not someone that acts like a teenager. All right, Cheyenne, come on up here. You stand over there, you stand over there. I want to see who the smartest one out of the adult or the teenager is. I'm going to put something in your hand, hold it out, close your eyes, and I'm going to ask you to tell me what it is when you get to look at it. You ready? All right, open your eyes and look at it. Tell me what it is. Quarter. Say it louder. Quarter. A little bit louder. Quarter. A quarter. Do you know what a quarter equals? Yeah, 25 cents. All right, what school do you go to? I'm sorry. Anyway, okay, close your eyes. I'm going to put something else in your hand. I'm going to have you look at it. I'm going to have you tell me what it is. All right. A quarter. Are you sure? Look at it again. That is not how I put it in your hand. Close your eyes, you cheater. Tell me. A quarter. A quarter. Mm-hmm. How, much is the, how much is the value of it? 25 cents. All right, stand right there. Let's see if he's smarter than you are. Close your eyes. Where's that hanky that I was blowing my nose? No, just kidding. <laughs> Close your eyes. Same thing. You cheating? No. Okay. Open your eyes. Tell me what's in your hand. A quarter. You need to hold that down here a little further. You... <laughs> All right. Close your eyes. What's in your hand? A quarter. And what's that worth? 25 cents. What school did you go to? Which one? That's true. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. So what was the difference when I put this in your hand the first time? Do you remember? You don't remember. You go to, you don't remember. You go sit down. Okay, what, was the, what, what happened when I put it in your hand the first time? What happened the second time? Did it change, did it change the value of the coin? Does heads and tails change the value of the coin? So if I hand it to you with the heads up, what is it? We already went over this once. What is it? What do you mean? Say it's still a quarter. It's still a quarter. All right, you go sit down. Go sit down. Wow. We need to pray, we need to pray for our teachers more and more and more. <laughs> where was all the teachers at? I said we need to pray for the teachers more and more and more, amen? The truth of the matter is this. Every coin has two sides. Can I get an amen? amen. Just making sure you're awake. Every coin has two sides. A side that is represented by heads and a side that is represented by tails. We have a 50-50 chance that if I flip this coin right now that it is either going to land on heads. I know it's not technically 50-50, but for this demonstration it is. It's either heads or tails. Sean, you want to put your motorcycle up on, on for one? Heads, I get it. Tails, you know. No? Okay, I just shot. Yeah, that's why he's like, yeah, here, use mine. But they both have, or every coin that we have is represented by a heads and or a tails. But the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter what side is facing up, it's still the amount that it originally was. Amen? Amen. They both work together to be a representation of the same coin. 
As a matter of fact, if you, if, if you or I saw the coin just laying on the ground, which actually Grayson did earlier today, laying on the ground, we would be able to tell what it was no matter what side was up. Today I want to talk to you just for a little bit this morning about two sides of the same coin. Two sides of the same coin. Can I just go ahead and just start this off with the truth? And you've heard me say this many, many times, but the truth of the matter is we are in the last day. Notice I didn't say it last days plural. The truth of the matter is we're past the plural stage and we are actually in the last day. Amen? And, 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 and the, the quicker and, and the more we understand that, the better our relationship with Christ is going to be. You've heard me say this several times from this very pulpit. Many people for many years have preached and said the same thing. But we are seeing more biblical prophecies, end time prophecies, and biblical things coming to fruition that we're supposed to be looking for today. Hello? There are more things happening that is stated in the Bible and telling us what to look for for, for, for the last days that are happening right now. And the problem is a lot of the church world is missing it today. Something that we should recognize, we should see things that we recognize and it's just set a fire underneath us. We have been told what to look for. We just read a set of verses that we are supposed to be, what we're supposed to be looking for, what we should recognize. And, and if we're seeing it, it should not only excite us, but it should push us into the direction of doing what the Lord has told us to do. The truth of the matter is what we just read is actually happening right now. Right before our very eyes. We are seeing a falling away from Christianity. More people are leaving Christianity than any time in history. According to one report that I read, there are, and check this is crazy, there are 11.7 million people that leave Christianity per year. Eleven point seven million people choose to leave Christianity a year. If you if if you do the study on how many churches close their doors just in America alone per year, it will blow your mind. If you and, and this number this number is just not people that sit in in, in the congregation. This number also includes the leadership of the churches that decide to leave the faith and, and pastors and pastors' wives that, that decide to leave the faith. 11.7 million people per year. I don't know about you, but that, that sounds like there's a great falling away happening today. One major reason they leave is because they do not want to embrace the truth of the word. Mm, Y'all ain't going to help me preach today. I said one major reason they leave is because they do not want to embrace the truth of the word. They want to embrace their version of the truth. They want to em embrace and incorporate the worldly vision and the worldly definition of truth in their churches. We're told about this in 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4, and it says this. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Sound familiar? But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside by fables. You know, fables like, oh, everybody's going to go to heaven. 
Fable's like, you can do whatever you want to do and play the grace card. And, ooh, y'all going to get me. I might get stomping myself here in a minute. Yeah, I believe in the song Grace, Grace, Wonderful Grace, but I also believe that when you give your life to Christ, you got to change. You can't live like the devil Monday through, Monday through Saturday and come and be all angelic on a Sunday. We got more people leaving churches because they get so upset with the pastor preaching the truth that they, they want to go and, and feel good all the time. They want a cheerleader behind the pulpit instead of a man of God who's willing to spit the word and, and preach fire and let people know that, hey, you need to change your ways because the Lord says that we cannot sit on the fence. We cannot be uh, lukewarm, that we got to be hot or cold because lukewarm, he'll spew you out of your mouth. We need preachers that preach the word of God that says, hey, I got news for you. Not everybody's going to make it into heaven because Jesus says narrow is the way. And there... I just don't like it. How dare he preach against all... mm. How dare he say abortion is murder? It's my choice. Yeah, you can choose to do what you want to do with your body, but that body growing inside you ain't yours. Woo, just get me off. I, I, missed a, I missed a whole week. I feel like preaching for real. How dare he say that I shouldn't let my boys want to be a little girl at the age of four or the age of 24 or the age of 34? I got news for you. If you were born a boy or a girl, it is so much who you are that when you die, if they dig your bones up 100, 150 years from now, and they can't see any flesh, and they have their bone, and they pull that DNA out of the bone, guess what it's going to say? It don't matter what you've done to yourself. It's going to say that you were a boy or that you were a girl. You weren't assigned. You were designed. And you were so far designed that it, 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 it encompasses even how your bones grow grow. They can tell, mm, I'm about to get biological in here. I made my own word up and everything. Isn't that right? <laughs> it, it is now. It's in that Pastor Rob dictionary that I'm writing. I meant to say biological, but biological sounds even better. It sounds even cooler. It's so much who you are that if they find your pelvis bone, just by the pelvis bone, they could tell that if you were born female or male. That's not an assignment that you check on a, a birth certificate. That is a design that was designed by the one and only God that, that resonates in heaven that created the creation of man. And if that offends you, I'm not going to apologize because it's the word of God that's offending you and you got a situation, the altar's open, go ahead and come and pray. I'm tired, I'm tired of watching men and women kind of just be like the stay puff marshmallow man around, around what's going on in the world today. You want to know what's going on in the world today? The, the, the church has become wimps and, and sin has started running rampant and starts laughing at the church because the church is not standing in the power that Jesus Christ gave them. I wish somebody would hear what I'm saying today. Let's just tiptoe through the tulip and make everybody feel so good. I can't even tiptoe anymore, so I'm just trampling on the tulips, roses, what, weeds, whatever is in my way. Because fat boy gets on his tiptoes, the toes are going to be broke. Keep preaching, keep preaching, preacher. People turning away from the truth, not wanting to hear the truth. Why? Because, they, because the devil don't want them to hear the truth because they know that the devil knows what the Bible says, that the truth shall set them free. He wants to keep everybody in bondage, even if they think they're walking in freedom, because the devil is a liar and he'll twist everything. He'll make you think you're walking free when you're in bondage.
You want to know why the United States is in the shape that it's in right now? <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to get in trouble. You want to know why inflation is so bad? You want to know why? You want to know why it's like you, you got to take a loan out just to put gas in your car? Because we've allowed the devil to influence decisions that the church has made. Well, see, so y'all didn't hear me. Y'all thought I was going to blame the politicians. They got they're they're puppets of the situation. The problem started when the church sat back and we allowed them to remove prayer out of schools. The, pro the problem happened when the church sat back and we allowed them to remove the Ten Commandments out of our courtrooms. The, the problem happened was when the church sat back and we allowed Roe versus Way to get passed and, and babies starting to be sacrificed like, like it we're sacrificing to the prophet Baal. I wish somebody would hear what I'm saying today. I'm feeling it. Woo. I might have to amen myself here in a minute. Fables and fairy tales. Embracing a, a perverted definition of truth. I'm not talking about people in the world. I'm actually talking about people that are church going, people that have grown up in the church their whole lives and they're walking away from their faith and, and, and they're, they're, they're chasing dreams and fairy tales. The truth of the, the, truth of the matter is that, that, that we have a whole lot of people that seem to have the itchy ear syndrome today. You all here today? There's people that have the itchy ear syndrome today. Oh, I don't like what he's doing here, so I'm going to run over here. Preacher, why would a loving God send people to hell? You want to know what my answer for that question is? He doesn't. You do. Ooh. Hell's not filled with people that rejected God. Hell's filled with people that, let me try, try that again. Hell's not filled with people that God rejected. Hell's filled with people that rejected God and rejected the truth of the word of God. Hell's filled with people that rejected the fact that Jesus died on the cross so they may be saved. And they chased their ears, their itchy ears, and they wanted to hear that everything's going to be all right. And it don't matter, it don't matter what you do, it don't matter who you are, that, that if heaven is real, God, the God of this universe is, is such a God of love that when you get up there, he's just going to say, go ahead and come in. I wish that was true, but my God is a loving God, yes, and, and he's a just and fair God. Can I just tell you right now, there's going to be a whole lot of people that have sat their lives inside a church room that never got into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And on their judgment day, Jesus is going to look at them. I can show you in the word of God where it says it. Jesus is going to look at them and say, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Somebody say amen or oh me. Give the Lord a clap offering of praise. Come on. Y'all better not let me take vacation anymore. Some will say, but there's another side of the coin. There's another side of the coin. And that side is, is, is this fact, that there will be a last day revival. There will be a last day revival. Oh, we talked about the falling away, but what sometimes what we forget to preach about is the last day revival. And, and we start reading about this in the Old Testament, actually, in, in the book of Joel, the second chapter, uh, verses 28 through 32. The Word of God says this, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Say all flesh. 
Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servant and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Mm. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in the Mount of Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance. And the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Oh, somebody better get excited. Let me just tell you that the revival, the last day revival is also actually happening right now. That y'all should have been excited about that, but I understand why you're not because some of y'all are looking like, where do you see a revival? That's how you know you need revived. <laughs> I'm just going to preach this way. That way I don't see the, the, the mean looks that I'm getting right now. Some of y'all need a Holy Ghost defibrillator. <laughs> Shock them again. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't felt the Holy Ghost in forever that, that you, when you open your freezer and you get cold, you think, woo! You had all, but really, you just pulling out the meat for Sunday service. Hello? Sometimes the only, the only reason some of y'all run is when you see a little three foot snake in the grass when you're cutting it. I heard some big dudes hit some high notes during a work, work day up there. And I'm just going to I about made them join the choir. They hit some notes that weren't even written yet. Um, you might not see it. You might not feel it. You might think that I have lost my mind when I have said it. But it is happening, and it is happening right now. There was another survey that I read this week. This past week that states this, 2.7 million people are converting to Christianity annually. Did you hear what I said? That's not even yearly, that's annually. 2.7 million worldwide. That is not including the numbers from countries like China where it is illegal to be a Christian. Did y'all hear what I said? 2.7 million. People annually coming to Christ. There are people that are laying their lives on the line to embrace the truth of the word of God. There are people laying their lives on the line to understand and to feel a true relationship with Jesus Christ. Something that they didn't grow up in, something that they never heard of until a missionary went into the battleground, went behind enemy lines and started preaching, thus saith God, and started preaching, Jesus will set you free, and started preaching that Jesus died on the cross for you and then was raised from the dead so you could have the opportunity to spend eternity in a place called heaven. There are revival services all over, all over in, in, in countries that we can't even pronounce that thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people are flooding because they're hungry for the truth. And we have a hard enough time getting up on a Sunday morning to come to church. Oh, I'm just going to go there. Heaven forbid we come to church on a Wednesday at 7 p.m. I'm getting real today. I'm just going to sit right here, Eric. You are? No, I'm not. I'm going. There was a time growing up that the same people that filled the churches on a Sunday morning were there on a Sunday night. And over three quarters of the people that were there on Sunday morning and Sunday night were there on a Wednesday night. Anytime the door churches were open, people were there. 
We knew who was going to be there, why they were there, and we knew that, that it, it, if it was going long, even us little kids knew that if it was going long, it was because the altars were filled. These altars, altars in our churches today, the only thing they're collecting is dust. They're supposed to be collecting tears and snot, but they're collecting dust. Because we're too worried about what people would think if we go up to the altar and start praying. People, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people flooding to hear the truth of the word of God, laying their life on the line. There are actually people that get imprisoned when they leave those revivals, those those messages. Not only do they get in prison, but it, it, some of them even get put to death. But they don't care because they want to experience the truth. Man, you guys, you guys making me work for it today. The truth, is, the truth of Jesus is still spreading. And the fastest growth is coming in countries that will kill you if they find out. There are people, thousands and thousands, if not millions of people, leaving other religions because they have been exposed to the truth. They want to tell you that, that the Muslim religion is the fastest growing religion. It might be the fastest one in the United States, but it's not the fastest one worldwide. Because there are people leaving the Muslim, the Islam faith, the Buddhist faith. There are people who are leaving all these other false religions. Because they got exposed to the truth. And they realize that being exposed to the truth will set them free, even if they're captive by men. Y'all hear what I'm saying? There's two sides to the coin. They have to, when they hear about Jesus, when they realize that the truth and, and Jesus is real, and that they find out that Jesus does love them, and that Jesus will forgive them, and God will forgive them through the blood of Jesus Christ, and that no matter where they are or who they are, Jesus will set them free. Now that is what I call revival, a pouring out of his spirit upon all flesh, all flesh. How many Sunday school brats do I have in here? People who grew up in Sunday school? Mm -hmm. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. That's just... That's just not for Americans. That's for those over in Ethiopia, those in Iraq, those in Iran, those in Afghanistan, those in all the other Astans, those on the Gaza Strip that are launching rockets into Israel, those that are in Israel, China, Mongolia, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, New York. That's a whole different kind of country. California, Mexico, Canada, Switzerland. Name the country, and Jesus wants to pour out his, God wants to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. There is a revival. The last day revival is going on right now, and I'm afraid that the church in the United States is missing it. Because we get our feelings hurt. Because we want to do it our own way. I wish you all be helping me preach today. We need revived in the United States today. And the only way that we can truly, re, truly get in, involved in this last day revival is if the Holy Spirit, and we allow the Holy Spirit to break in and revive us one more time. 
You want to see your relationship with Christ grow. You want to see this church grow physically and spiritually. You want to see you want to see crazy things happen in this community. You want to see the drugs and and and, and the demon of 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 addiction run out of of Muskingum County, screaming and yelling and and and, and cursing and all that stuff. Let the Holy Ghost revive his people one more time. Start embracing the truth and understand, yes, there's a great falling away, but at the same time, there's a last day revival, and we need to get involved in it. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. That was just my introduction. Here we go. Someone say he's pouring out his spirit. Two sides of the same coin. Two events that seem to be the exact opposite of each other, but really is the same event. One will actually point to the other. I read one other report when I was studying that gave the numbers that that were leaving and, and the numbers that are coming. And the truth is that there are still more people worldwide coming into a relationship with Jesus than live, leaving. I believe one of the reports that I read was it's, a, it's about a 3.7 million difference between those that are leaving and those that are coming. You want to know why? Because my God is undefeated. Did you hear what I said? I said my God is undefeated. And I got news for the devil. The devil might think he's winning, but he, he's just dumb enough to real, don't re, and he don't realize that he's already been defeated. Because once Jesus stepped out of that grave, he claimed victory for God. He claimed victory for you. And if you don't want to embrace it, I'll embrace it for you. You can have revival in your downtime. Y'all hear what I said? You know, instead of the boo-hoos, you need to give the amens. Both sides are pointing to the truth, as Paul and Sean or whoever comes up. Both sides are pointing to the truth. What truth is that, you ask? I'm glad you asked. It's pointing to the truth of where we are today. It's pointing to right where we are today. They are working together. They are working together to allow his people to see the truth that we are in the last day and that any time, at any moment, at a twinkling of an eye, God can look to the angel that is warming up the trumpet and he can say, and look over to Jesus and say, get ready to go get my people. And then he'll look at that angel and he'll say, blow that trumpet. At any moment, it could happen. And in a twinkling of an eye, those of us that are prepared, those of us that have been walking in victory, those of us that, 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 that are in a, a true relationship with Jesus Christ, in a twinkling of an eye, the, the graves are going to blow open because the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then it says those of us that remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds and we will be spending eternity with Jesus Christ. And then after the tribulation time, then something really cool is going to happen. Because then, after that, Jesus is going to step out of heaven and he's going to put his feet on, on, on earth's soil once again. The Bible says that he's going to put his foot on a mountain and the mountain is going to split and water is going to start running. And then the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Revive us, O oh Lord. Revive us, O oh Lord. Stand to your feet all over the house today. So let me ask you a question today. Which side will you embrace? Which side will you embrace? Yes, people are falling away, but others are coming. Yes, there are those that are leaving but yes, there, are, there is a last day revival that is going on right now. It's been here for a while. 
It's been here for a very long, long time. It started way back on that day of Pentecost when 120 men and women were in the upper room. Right, right after the Holy Ghost came in and made himself known, some people heard those 120 people praising him in tongues. Some were in known language, some weren't. And then they showed up and they said, oh, they're just drunk. And Peter, you know, that dude that denied him three times. <laughs> Peter said, whoa, they're not drunk like you're thinking. Notice he didn't say they're not drunk. He said, they're not drunk like you're thinking. And then Peter stood up in front of all these people, including the people that were hunting them to take their lives. Peter stood up. <laughs> he stood up and he, he started preaching the very first Pentecostal message. He stood up and he started quoting the prophet Joel. He didn't have a Bible in his hand. He didn't have a scroll in his hand. They would have considered him uneducated, not even worthy to speak the words that he was about to speak. Some folk think that about me. There's been times that I've thought that about me. But then we find out in Acts chapter 2, verses 17 and 21, Peter starts preaching this word, and he says, and it starts out like this, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says, says that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your Young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my maid, man, men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm. Mm. Read that again. Whosoever. I'm so glad I'm a whosoever. I have any whosoever's in the house. I have any whosoever's in the house. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall. Be saved. So church, let me ask you this. Where are we at today? Where are we at today? Where are you as an individual? Where are we as a church? Which side of the coin are you willing to embrace? Which side of the coin, represent, coin represents who you are? Both sides are part of the, of the coin and, and, and the coin of truth. We have been told, we have been warned, and now we need to be willing to react. We are in the last day. And to be honest with you, today, today can be the day that he calls his people home. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm going to ask a very loaded question today, and I, I, I haven't asked this question since I've been here that I remember, but I'm going to ask a question. If you were to walk out of this building today, get in your car, pull out of this place, and get into a fatal accident, and open your eyes before Jesus, what will he say to you? Will he say, well done, my good and faithful servant, come on in? Or will he say, I'm sorry, but I never knew you? It's a little bit different than, than asking you the way I usually ask you. 
Why are you asking it this way? Because yesterday when I was going to celebrate my wife's birthday, right underneath the overpass on Underwood, there was an accident that if people walked away from it, it was a miracle. The whole front end of the car was gone. Then we were sitting at home last night and Jessica said, oh no. I said, what? I thought something happened to one of our kids that were out of state. And she said, there's, a, there's, a, there's an alert out. All first responders have been called because there's a child in the river. You want to talk about a punch in the gut. But what, was, what if that was you? What, was that, what if that was you? Where would you be spending eternity? Heaven is real, and so is hell. And I don't care what anybody tries to tell you, hell's not a party. It is damnation and torture. Just read about it in the Bible. It doesn't sound like a fun place. Oh, you're just trying to scare me. I'm just going to say the way another preacher once said it. If I got to scare the hell out of you, I will. Because I don't want anybody to go to hell. Not even my worst enemy. And I have some pretty, pretty bad enemies. I don't wish hell on anybody. But I want to pray eternity for you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here today, if you're here today and you need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm going to just tell you, don't wait. Don't wait another day because you're not promised tomorrow. Maybe you're here today and, and you've given your life to Christ, but you felt yourself kind of drifting away and, and maybe not making him the priority that he's supposed to be in your life. I'm just going to ask you to fix it today. If you just need to spend time with the Lord in prayer, these altars are open. But I want to give you the opportunity to enter into the best relationship that I've ever been in or to fix that relationship. If you're here today and you need that relationship or you need to fix it, I'm going to count to three and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand on the count of three. One, two, three. Is there anybody in the house? Hands up. That means if the trumpet were to blow today that we all out of here. I pray and hope that that's real. Who's ready to join the last day revival? Show of hands. Anybody in the house? Come on. Who wants to see a revival just blow through your house, blow through your family, and blow through this church? Who wants to come on? Who wants to go to the next level individually and corporately? Is there anybody that wants to go to the next? Come on. Come on. I will warn you. I will warn you that when we go to the next level, there will be next level attacks, but that means you're going to have a next level victory. Amen. Lord, I believe that I preached the word that you wanted me to preach today. And Lord, I know that it might have been rough. It might not have been what some people wanted to hear. But Lord, I found out a long time ago, those are usually the ones that need to be preached. So Lord, I pray that something that was said today, Lord, pierces our hearts and challenges us in a way that we haven't been challenged before. Because the truth is, Lord, that when your word is launched into the atmosphere, it is life challenging. And I pray, Lord, today that nobody leaves here the same as they came in. Because when your word is spoken and applied to our lives, it is life changing. Lord, I pray. I pray that the truth of the matter is that we all get to come and spend time, spend eternity with you. And Lord, I ask as, as the, the pastor of this church, Lord, I ask that you revive us one more time. I ask, Lord, that you stoke the revival fire that's in us and let it burn so bright. Let it burn so hot that we can't even stand it and that we have to share it, Lord. 
Let it burn so bright that the darkness runs from it, Lord. And use us in ways that we haven't even imagined. Lord, we love you. We praise you and we bless you. And it's in Jesus' powerful name we pray. And everybody in the house says, amen and amen. We love you all so very much. Don't forget, if you're a member of the church, we are going to have a membership meeting. As always, go with God and God will go with you. God bless.